in a period in which the Standard & Poor's 500 stock index has risen steadily for almost eight years, and with stocks hitting new all-time highs week after week, it's important to remember the relationship between the S&P 500 index and a prudent investor's portfolio. The S&P 500 is the measure of stock market performance and investor sentiment, but it's a poor barometer to apply to a retirement portfolio. It's kind of like using a ruler to measure whether a watermelon tastes good. The S&P 500 is an important metric if you're analyzing earnings or valuations of America's largest companies. But comparing a prudently constructed retirement portfolio and the S&P 500 is apples and oranges. It's mathematically impossible for a diversified portfolio ever to return as much as the top performing asset class of a portfolio. When you diversify, you'll never get a return as good as the best asset class in which you invest, but you'll also never sustain a loss as bad as that of the worst. And when you're looking at a period of less than 5 or 10 years, returns on a portfolio diversified across all asset classes will lag the S&P 500, especially in a bull market. Dr. Craig Israelson, an independent PhD economist and authority on low-cost investing techniques, whose research we license, recently provided us with one of his studies to share with you. Over the 56 rolling 35-year periods from 1926 through 2015, the large cap Standard & Poor's 500 returned 11.1% annually versus a 10.4% annual average return on a broadly diversified portfolio. But the risk of the single asset large cap portfolio, its standard deviation, was 18.1% versus just 13.7% on the four asset diversified portfolio. That's a good risk return trade off. The worst one year loss in the SP 500 large cap index was a jaw dropping 43.3% in the 56 rolling year periods examined by Israelson while the worst one-year nosedive on the diversified portfolio was a more tolerable 30.3%. It wasn't easy to stay committed to an investment plan in the terrible bear market of 2008 and 2009, but diversifying across four asset classes instead of just investing in stocks sharply lessened losses and eased the emotional toll. Over the first seven months of 2016, the S&P 500 although more volatile than in recent years, climbed steadily higher. And in July, it repeatedly broke new all-time record highs. A correction of 10% or more could occur any time, although economic data normally presaging past reversals was not evident. Stay realistic, and don't make the mistake of expecting a diversified portfolio to perform as well as the S&P 500, especially if it keeps setting new record highs as we hope it will.